EFX product that you could use. It's red. I don't remember the name of it. Um, tropical punch flavor. That was a blend of potato, rice, and corn sugars. So you have a sugars that burn at three different speeds. And that's the reason why they do the blends. And something like that, they would drink water the whole rest of the time and only have their one little slug every 15 to 20 minutes of an elite athlete workout. And I'm talking a workout that's greater than an hour and a half or about an hour and a half. That would be required. If the workout's an hour or less, they don't need that. They should be already well nourished. Wait for an hour. They should be able to like manage that easy with good nutrition. And Gatorade during their workout is not enough. Gatorade has barely anything in it other than sugar. It's sugar with a few electrolytes and that's it. What about something like you can super starch, one of those kind of drinks? Yes. Some of those do do the same thing. Okay. And that way you can fuel their workout, but then you have to start talking about calories. If you have a chunky athlete, I'm not trying to be rude, but if you have a chunky athlete and somebody who needs to get trim, that's not the best way to do this because then they're exercising, but all you're really doing is putting the calories right back in them. And so if the person needs to trim up, you take advantage of that mechanism by making sure you feed them correctly outside of the pool. And they have to understand that they need to be eating every two to three hours. Okay, guys, now we get to the next factor because you guys asked about growth and some of these other things. An athlete's not going to grow if you're not going to attain adequate height if the person's body believes that they're constantly under threat and they're going to be killed any minute by some animal that's chasing them. That's one. And so if their body interprets Christian standing on the deck as being some monster that's going to like, kill them, then their body literally is going to shut down growth because growing is not a good thing for someone who's getting ready to be killed. And so one of the best ways to sustain proper growth factors is to make sure they get enough sleep. We produce almost all of our growth hormone at night while we're sleeping. They have to eat every two to three hours. There is no such thing as intermittent fasting for an athlete. Zero. No intermittent fasting. Never, ever, never. I want them eating every two to three hours, and I want their body to believe that food is always available. Like, always. There will never be a day when they can't eat. Yes, well, I was just going to say, it's holding on when you were talking about snacks. So the athlete is at school, day, so how are they eating every two I write hours? letters every day for athlete families yeah. to the school districts saying this child must, awesome. due to medical reasons, mm -hmm. have food every two hours. That's great. It's an have, absolute must. What do you suggest would be like something that is Their pediatrician should write that letter for you. Okay. It, it, there's not a person in this room that shouldn't have that letter written for their child already, and you have it on hand. It's an automatic to the nurse, it's an automatic to the school system, and, it, and the static isn't going to happen if it's written by your MD. If they try to argue with that, that's, a, that's going to be a big problem. And what do you realistically think they, what could they carry to school to eat? Like, I mean, it, it could be nuts, seeds, if they don't like such things as that. Uh -huh. uh, you could end up giving them a cheese stick if they're a cheese mm -hmm. stick kid. Uh, my favorite would be even things like the IsoPure. You put it in powder form. You throw in one teaspoon of glutamine into that because there's already four grams of glutamine in the 20 grams of IsoPure. So you add a teaspoon, which is five grams. That gives them their eight that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And if the child has a Gatorade, they can dump a little Gatorade in there, shake it up, drink it. That They just got all the protein they need for an entire meal and one little teeny drink. Mm -hmm. You can make them pudding with isopure, mm -hmm. which means you, you make their favorite pudding for them, you make it on the stove, you stir into that enough servings of isopure in order to create... I'm sorry, it doesn't break it down, the warmth of the cooking or the sitting well, around? Yeah, pre digest it. It's still amino acids. Okay. It's not going to break it down past that. So okay. We're looking to get the amino acids in them. So you talk about protein, I say 20 grams. There's 20 grams of amino acids, all different types. Of okay. So... Yes, it predigests it, but that's not bad. I mean, it turns out like flan. Tastes good. Now, if you don't want to use as much, you know, isopure, and the kid likes pudding, you can buy Mutopia from HEB. That's 12 grams of protein per cup, and you use that to make the pudding. Every cup of pudding automatically then has 12 grams of protein in it. That's a great snack. Let's say your kiddo loves Jello. You know, Glenn, I would never feed my kid Jello. Well, if you feed your kiddo jello, 
You take the isoplure, you put it into the jello when it's still hot on the stove, and you figure out how many ounces you have there and how many servings you're going to make, and you know exactly how many grams of protein are in every single cup, and it turns out like jello. Does it change the taste of it? Like no, it doesn't change the taste. Isoplure has no effect. <clears throat> now, it will change it and make it stiff, so you may find out that you have to add more water. Just why I mentioned that the pudding mix will turn out like stiffer like flan. Okay. And so some people then begin to adapt the recipes to add more milk so that it doesn't come out quite so stiff. But you still have all your recipe right there in front of you. And you guys have to do the math. You have to write down how many cups of milk you're using with the grams of protein in there and how much isopure am I going to add in, how many cups is this recipe going to make, divide it all the way out so you end up with a child who's getting the appropriate amount of protein in every single one of these pudding cups. That's actually a very simple thing for any family to be able to do. And you buy them the little, you know, lined packs and they throw in their backpack that keeps it cold. And it only has to be kept minimally cold, actually. Does the, does the plant protein the same as the animal protein? Or which well, one's it's better? Made, the plant proteins are just as good. It just depends on if the person can digest it. So it comes back to whey. If the whey gives you a stomach ache, you can't use it. I have people that tell me all the time, Lynn, I can't take rice protein. Rice protein gives me a stomach ache whenever I take it. That's because rice protein is extremely compact. And when you consume it, it can make a very compact blob in your tummy. And that gives some people a, a hard time digesting it. Hemp protein, I'm just explaining. Hemp protein creates a looser protein blob in the tummy. Because these kids take this and they go like that. I mean, it's, you know, it's not like they're sitting there sipping it. They want to get it, get it in them and be done and the whole works. And I want them drinking it and that's what it's in that window. So the hemp protein's looser. If I'm picking a protein for your child, I'm going to be, pick pea, hemp, milk. I'm not picking rice. Because rice, rice protein is like drinking wallpaper paste. <laughs> and I want them to continue drinking the protein drink, not like reject it. And hemp protein is hypoallergenic. So almost nobody's ever allergic to hemp protein. So if you have a child with sensitive tummies, right, and they're saying, oh my gosh, when I drink those protein drinks, I always get a stomach ache, or it gives me diarrhea, or I get this or I get that, hemp protein is one of the least likely to ever create any of those type of events. Okay, so guys, going backwards, that's kind of the shakes. Now, one of the things you can do with the shakes is that's a great time to introduce antioxidants into your child. If you a child with a sensitive palate, this won't work, and I say really sensitive. If you have a child who enjoys fruit and all these things, it's like magic. You guys can buy a product called Organic Rainbow Blend, made by Da Vinci Labs or Food Science Corporation. Every single fruit and vegetable in there is completely organic. And no, I'm not linked to any of these companies in any way, and I get no financial remuneration from anyone. <laughs> so, organic Rainbow Blend by Da Vinci Labs, that is six to seven servings of fruit and vegetables in one scoop. It's dehydrated fruits and vegetables. That's all it is, and all the sugar has been removed. And when you put that into the drink, it has more of a berry slash plum-like flavor. And it's very easily hidden by blueberries and strawberries. You would not put it in orange juice. It does not taste good. <laughs> in orange juice, it doesn't. But in one of the berry juices, or in a berry or um, what, pit or stone fruit flavored drink like cherry, it tastes really good. And literally, that would be all the fruits and vegetables from an antioxidant standpoint that your child has to have for an entire day. <coughs> in, one, in one scoop. That's all it is, is dehydrated fruits and vegetables. But that doesn't matter what the timing, that's not the 15 minutes. Oh, ideally, if I could get it into that little window, that's why I'm telling you about a dry version, where my favorite thing to do is buy a bunch of the little shakers with the little steel round ball in there, mm -hmm. and I put them out on the counter, and when the young swimmers are staying with me, they put protein and glutamine to every single one of them down the line, they add their little scoop of organic rainbow blend to every single one of them, and those are all dry, and they go in their bag. And after every workout, they take one of those, they add in about that much water. Because any athlete that stays with me, it's called tough. Because they tell me I don't like it. I'm tough. And when you get home, you take your swimsuit, you hang it up, and you wash your clothes. The second you come in the door. And I've had a couple of them go, oh yeah, you know, and that sort of thing. But I still get Christmas cards and birthday cards. And <laughs> I've never seen one of them for all these years. 
because my goal is to raise them in a way that enables them to take 100% responsibility for this so it's all up to them. And, I, and I'm an anti-procrastinator. With these elite athletes, many of them are brilliant, and because they're also brilliant on top of it, they learn that they can get away with just using their brilliance, and that's a whole other issue we can talk about. <laughs> but that comes into, you know, nature. I mean, yes ma'am. So, can you overdo it with this organic rainbow blend? I mean, is that You could use it every single idea. day. If you but used it every day, day, just once a day, once I mean, there wouldn't be any need to use it more than that. But that does provide the antioxidant protection we're looking for for all the free radicals that were produced during the exercise. If I'm trying to keep them from breaking down their tissues and getting injured, this is one of the things you can do to make sure that you're providing them with really good antioxidant capacity to prevent muscle and tissue breakdown. Yeah, so the recovery is the ideal time. That's the yeah. ideal time. But let's say that the best you guys can do is get it in when they come back home from practice. And you guys get out ice cream and you make themselves an, an ice cream frosty with blueberries or strawberries with a scoop of that stuff in it. It actually tastes very good. Mm. Yes, How much sleep do you recommend? These athletes? Absolutely. As, and then this sounds like I'm being silly, but I'm not. Absolutely as much as you can possibly give them. And I know that everyone's super busy these days and everything else, but if I can get them in bed between 8.30 and 9 o'clock, that's what I shoot for every night. Yes. Ten You're hours, asking, I'm saying. Ten hours would be ideal. If I could. I know they wake up super early to go to practices and all this stuff and everything else, but ideally I want them in bed at <coughs> 9 o'clock. I mean, it's, it's we need a recording of you saying that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not mom's words. <laughs> so the window. It's still open. I mean, you just take advantage of that entire window if you can. Okay. And I never want arguing about food. I do not want arguing about food. You have to figure out a way, even if it's not your ideal situation where it looks like a Laffy Taffy. And they're going, well, I don't like dates, but I'll chew two gummy bears. Fine. That spikes insulin, that did it. It's more important that we teach them to be able to do this and prevent their bodies from breaking down than worrying about chemicals and worrying about the other fusion furnaces. They're bulletproof right now. So one, of the, one of the birthday cards I get every single birthday is from a very, very famous swimmer who says to my favorite Nutritionist, not that I ever did a blanket thing you ever blanket and asked me. <laughs> Thank you so much for all your help. I love so and so. And the first time I met with him, he, 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 every day he ate the same thing. He had a triple cheeseburger for breakfast and a large order of fries. And a triple cheeseburger for dinner and a large order of fries. With the biggest chocolate shake that I didn't even think they even made a malt that big at that particular fast food place. And that's what he had every day, and he was already winning world championships before he talked to me. So to quote him, why would I do a blanking thing that you blanking asked me to do when I can blank and just do what I'm doing, and I'm already winning world championships? But now the guy is older, and even though he teased me badly, in moments of sanguine behavior, he says, I wish I'd listened to you because it shortened my career, I have injuries I know that I shouldn't have, and I do believe by taking care of myself, better, I would last a while. And it's just, yeah, like that. You, it's the duh effect. You burn yourself up. But he's a great guy, sweet man. He doesn't have any social cueing and he has a filthy mouth, but he's a really nice guy. <laughs> so in this mechanism over here on all of this, guys, you guys can take advantage of the food and you can take advantage of what I've already chatted with you so far today. But that doesn't mean that your child's going to buy in. The only way the child's going to buy in is if they assign value and significance to what I'm sharing. If they have not assigned value and significance to it, you can figure it out. It's just like that class that make an A in and then the class that they don't make an A in. Hmm. They made an A in the class that they made an A in, not because they're smarter in that class and compared to the other class, because they assigned value and significance to it, and so they made an A. The other class they don't give a rip about, and they didn't make an A.
it typically almost never has anything to do with smarts. So is there a way to get them to that point, to accept that? I mean... Or to understand it even. I mean, this is... Uh, for you guys. Yeah, this is for you yeah. guys. So okay. is there anything at their level that... Okay, the simplest thing, almost all these kids at their level, and I'm talking above 10 and above, they will understand and graph. They do. And you, you show them a graph, and you go, in this window, all of this goes into your body, in this window. If you're an elite cyclist, I have cyclists that come to see me that literally have like 40 inch thighs and 28 to my waist. Right? They can't buy clothes. And that's because they starve themselves in the first they starve themselves all day long, like literally starve. We'll eat like half a cup of rice and some little like cooked kale, all this little stuff. And they do all these wonderful little things during the day, and little kale chips and all this stuff and everything else. But then immediately before their, their exercise, they ingest this enormous mm -hmm. carbohydrates and all this stuff. And they do all this fancy stuff every day before they go do their workout. Mm -hmm. Then they fuel themselves during their workout and they always get their protein drink immediately post-workout. And they work out twice a day. So that's their two proteins they get in every day. And all the protein and all their diet is designed only to shove it into their legs. Any, it, they raise up their arms, they just won. Their elbows fatter. <laughs> it's like when they wreck, they break collarbones and break their arms. You don't hear about them breaking their legs. They don't have any muscles in their upper body. That's wasted weight on a bike. I mean, heck, they'll hollow out handlebars and support shafts just to gain an extra few ounces on their bicycle. What do you think they're doing to their upper body? It's called cachexia or wasting syndrome, and they purposely self-cannibalize their upper body so they have no muscles in their upper body. That's why they don't eat anything the rest of the day. Many of your athletes that cannot recover from workout to workout to workout, it's because of cachexia or wasting syndrome. And that's when they're not keeping up on the glutamine, and the body determines that any muscle that they did not use, they will cannibalize it to utilize it as fuel because they're not getting enough fuel on board. What do I tell all my swimmers that are not allowed to participate in? No lateral sports while you're swimming. You can't go play basketball with your buddies on the basketball court. You cannot go play volleyball. I don't want to see you on a tennis court. Any of those things unless you're training for it. Because when they're swimmers and they're doing all this swimming and they restricted their diet, the knees get enormously skinny. I mean enormously skinny. And the number one muscles that they go after are all the little lateral control muscles that they're not using because they're doing this. They're not being chased, they're not moving left and right, they're not doing any of those things. They'll actually cannibalize the rotational muscles in their shoulder that they don't use if they don't participate in a variety of strokes. And the muscles are not using that stroke, then they don't make. I'll take all my freestylers that come to see me, and one of the things I do is I press right back here on them. And my fingers go right into the joint. And they go, ooh, that didn't feel good. I go, I know, because you have no rear delt. <laughs> and they have nice big pecs, and front delts are all developed, but their rear delts like, Pfft. and they cannibalize that guy. They literally eat those muscles. And when you guys go to cancer centers, yes, cancer centers, that's the model for your athletes. The people going through cancer are extremely stressed out. They shut down the absorption of food off the gut because it's too much work. They begin to cannibalize their muscles because they're not using their muscles on a daily basis. And it's the old scriptural adage, for without a purpose, my people perish. If your body doesn't believe it's necessary, it's not necessary, and you eat it. That adage doesn't reference just like some spiritual purpose, like you have to be purposed in life. That references all three of you. If you retire and you don't use your mind, what happens to you? If you retire and you don't have a purpose in life, if you retire and you don't use your body, same thing. It's all three of you. Not to lecture you guys, but that's what that is. And your kiddos very often aren't doing all three. And so you have to maintain the glutamine, you have to maintain the proteins. All of this, if you don't do any of that, it doesn't matter what you do here, it doesn't matter what you do there, and this won't happen. That's why I'm spending so much time on all of this, because this one factor is actually addressing all of those issues. Yes, so, so rainbow powder doesn't get you out of, because um, this will come up for my daughter. Yeah, it doesn't, get you, doesn't get you out of, like, veggies at dinner. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, the oral cavity the for, a human, for a human <laughs> is the smallest oral intake area by mass and volume of the mammal of all mammals. 
You look around the room, look at your other fellow people, <laughs> and you look at the distance from the corner of the mouth to the corner of the mouth, and you think about how big I open my mouth, no matter how big I open my mouth, the in oral intake area of my mouth is minuscule compared to my 18-pound dog. My teeth, when I bite into a dental block, my dental imprint is never going to scare anybody. <laughs> it is very small. And when I bite on that little black piece of paper at my dentist, and they're checking my bite and doing all those fun things, I have like little, three little teeny points of contact for one molar. <laughs> Thank goodness I don't have flat grinding molars because then I would it'd be a really big dental bill. It's bad enough already. So, that means that humans are not designed for grinding. Humans are designed for bite, bite, swallow. When you bite your tongue, it hurts horrible. If you bite the inside of your lip, it is horrible. And that's because you have an enormous number of nerves in your mouth, and it's your mouth that sends a signal to your brain that you're eating. You want to do all your athletes a favor and not make them chew their food. I'm not joking. Humans are not designed to chew food. Humans are designed for bite, bite, swallow. When I let my mammal out to go potty in the morning, he does his potty dance until he's ready to poop, and then he points his rear end away from me, not because he's shy, but because so his eyes are facing me, and my eyes are supposed to be facing him because I'm a dog as far as he's concerned, <laughs> or he's a human. And that means that I'm supposed to have his back because he can't see behind him when he's pooping. Your children exactly this way. <laughs> There's a reason why they scream at you when you try to walk in the bathroom and they're in the bathroom. It's the same thing. I'm, I'm kidding. I like joking, but it's the same thing. And that means that when you're eating, the longer that vegetable stays in your child's mouth, the less likely they are to swallow it. So if you're feeding them raw vegetables, hoping that they're going to crunch up all these raw vegetables that they ate, you're torturing yourself. It'd be way better if you just blend those dudes up and hand it to them and say, drink it, that's all the vegetables you have all day. It's in them. You're done. No food fights. Anytime you can pre-digest the food before you put it in them, you're going to have a better chance of absorption on the tummy. We have to absorb almost all of our nutrients in the top one-third of the small intestine. Anything you can do to pre-digest food, nut butters, not nuts. Super tender meats, meats that they can bite, bite, swallow. That's the goal. If it goes beyond bite, bite, swallow, the amount of information being sent to them through their mouth is so amazing that their brain is going, man, not swallowing goulash. That is like disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> you can also do them a favor by not mixing their foods on their plate. Most swimmers, that's what it is. Most of the swimmers I've dealt with have their own version of sensory integration disorder. And by golly, they do not want all that stuff touching each other. And then it's a carrot, it's a carrot, and it's green beans, it's green beans, but don't mix them together. That's disgusting. <laughs> and if I want to put ketchup on my meat, I'll put ketchup on my meat, but don't stick a sauce on my meat, because I want to see the meat, and I want to know what it is before I eat it. <laughs> How many of you guys know that's true? Okay. And if you buy them a piece of clothing, and they won't wear it, why won't they wear it? They picked it out because it feels weird. Mm -hmm. right? And that's because the skin and the tummy contain 90% of the receptors for all the serotonin in the human body. 90%. You store 10% of your serotonin in your brain, but the other 90% is stored across your gut and your skin. And that's the reason why a real hug is one of the most healing things in the world. Because that releases the serotonin from your 5 h 2 receptors in your skin, floods your body. It's the first time most of us have been flooded with serotonin all day. But that's also the reason why many of these young people refrain from physical touch. What have they done all day long? They've been chased by animals trying to kill them. <laughs> and they did the best they could to be good people in school. Which meant all day long they're in what's called their theta mode, which is alert and tense. And then they walk out of the school, they hop in your vehicle, and you go, how did your day go? And they want to, like, bite in you. And that's because they spent all day long not trying to communicate with people and really let them know how they feel. And now you're trying to find out how they feel. And their buffer is gone. Serotonin is your ability to buffer your chemical response to your environment. So if you're going to do your kiddos a favor, you have to help them and improve their serotonin production so they buffer better, which will make your life better also. Serotonin has nothing to do with anxiety, depression, or irritability. Those are all symptoms of the lack of buffering. So give them a hug and then ask them how the day was. 
Don't ask another day. <laughs> <laughs> that, means, that means in most of them, with these sensory mechanisms all day long, their bucket is completely full. They want silence. Mm -hmm. If they want to talk, let them talk. And you can say to them, if you want to talk to me, you can talk to me. Or not. And you're done. This may be the most single valuable thing you said. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a Did huge issue that? for these athletes. Yeah. Most of these athletes, yeah. unfortunately, if you want to think of their brains, their brains are this. They are not Fred in one of their classes with this. Fred walks in that room, he picks up information, he processes that information, his input-output ratios are equal to each other, he may be absolutely brilliant. Your children are doing this all day long. They have to. If they don't, they're dead. Because something's been chasing them and killing them. <laughs> and that means they receive enormous amounts of information from their surroundings. They train themselves as athletes to be hyper-aware of everything, ha ha this is broad breaststroke, of everything happening around them. They knew what the person really meant when they said what they said, when they really didn't say what they said, but that's really what they meant. <laughs> <laughs> and in that arena, that means they will chew through all their resources way faster than somebody else, and by the end of the day, their bucket doesn't look like this. They receive so much information that the bucket's doing this. Now, the advantage you have is once your boys, those of you that have boys, and they start making a lot of testosterone, it can act as somewhat of a muting effect of this and they become oblivious. <laughs> <laughs> and it can become, you know, like, what's, what's going on? I don't know nothing. <laughs> and they get what I call, yeah, butt disease. <laughs> and they, you know, they want to have a yeah, butt about everything you want to tell them. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're necessarily crap. So, you really have to take into account the personality of your kiddos, is the point I make. You don't have a helpful statement for us, I, we have only girls? I know, what about the girls? <laughs> yeah. okay. With the girls, okay. with the boys, the testosterone acts is a generalized sense of well-being and they're not as dependent on serotonin. That's the bottom line. That's the reason why girls outnumber boys almost 8 or 9 to 1 for the use of antipsychotics, antidepressants, any anxiety medications, etc., 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 when they're younger. And that has to do with the testosterone effect. And testosterone acts to cause a buffer for them that spares their serotonin. They don't need the serotonin, or they don't know they need the serotonin, actually. That they do need. Because they use their testosterone to just like, you know, like whatever things like. And you go, honey, you haven't done your PSAT in your junior. Do you plan on going to college? Well, of course I plan on going to college. It's cool. Now the girl. When she was in the ninth grade, she was already making plans. <laughs> okay. And that means that for the young ladies, you have to support their serotonin production. So here's your list. Asparagus. Avocado. Guys, if the person came to see me and they had a neuroendocrine tumor that literally can live off of serotonin, I have to take them off of this entire list for a minimum of 10 days before I do a 24-hour urine analysis to determine whether or not their chemotherapy is working. That's how effective this list is. So it's not just silk. I know it takes. Mm -hmm. Avocado, asparagus, eggplant, walnut, a little bit with pecan, honey, dark chocolate. The plum family, plum, plum cot. I'm watching one person write, so I'm using her pen as our guide. Pluot. Yeah. Sorry, what did you say? Pluot, P-L-U-O-T, unless you're not a Texan, then it's a Pluot. <laughs> if you're a Texan, it's a Pluot. That's like the person who came to see me here recently that told me that she eats canola. And I was like, what? <laughs> and she goes, you know, I can't believe you don't know about canola. And I said, no, I don't know about canola. Tell me about canola. And I finally realized she's talking about quinoa. <laughs> um, she's from Texas. So, nectarine, cherry, apricot, peach, that whole pitstone family, right? Butternut squash, number one on the entire list. Acorn squash, pumpkin, close seconds. Sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, and the products made therein, like sun butter. Brilliant. Your kiddos. Brilliant. Little potatoes. Structurally little. Farmer Glenn, when I go out and I get my potatoes out of the garden, 
if I can fit them into the circle of my hand with an inch approximately between my thumb and forefinger, that's a C-sized potato. So C size or small. That's your <coughs> so you go to the bulk bins at your favorite grocery store, you get the little dudes. The book that was written on that was called Potatoes Not Prozac. And the little ones, there's an actual <laughs> enzyme that helps slow down the degradation of serotonin, keeping your serotonin around. Works very much like an MAO inhibitor. Processed tomatoes. Processed tomato means it can be cooked.